This video is going to go over the Dual Pro 2.0 multifunction steel and aluminum stud welding system from HNS Auto Shot. Uh, part number UNI 9802, so UNI9802. Uh, the UNI9802 that you see here in the picture is the power supply with uh, some, some, some accessories to, to uh, start your job. This is shown in a 9812 cart. And there's also available a 9862, which is a complete station that includes the machine, the cart, and all the relevant aluminum and steel accessories you're gonna need for, for pulling jobs. As an example, uh, three, three different sizes of bridges, a 12, a 34, and a 49 inch bridge that will come, will come with the, the 9862 package, as well as a, a bunch of additional accessories. So the main reason for this video today is to go over orientation of the control panel itself, uh, and then setting the collet and preparing our, our welder for aluminum stud welding, and then actually uh, setting a stud uh, on the aluminum panel. So to get kind of started, uh, this is a the big, big advantage with this machine. It's a 115 volt power supply. So that's the big improvement over the last generation. The last generation was 230 volt single phase. This machine is 110, 115 volt. Uh, regular common household circuit that can be found really in any anywhere in the shop. And that's the big benefit of this machine is it, it can be used anywhere. You can actually bring the machine to the job rather than bringing your job back to the 230 volt plug that you may have in, in, in your shop. So again, that's the biggest benefit. Another benefit of this machine is it's about 30% lighter and more portable than the previous generation. So you can see a much slimmer design and, and a lot easier to carry around. So we'll go ahead and plug this uh, machine in and show, show what it looks like on the control panel and kind of walk through some of those features. Again, this machine is capable of working with both steel and aluminum. You can see my ground and torch connections are here. I am set up right now for aluminum. However, I can quickly disconnect these and I do have a steel side torch and a steel side ground ring I can connect. And I can do uh, perform steel repairs to this machine as well. So it's really versatile in the shop and the fact that this machine can work with both steel and aluminum really makes it uh, a nice complement to your shop. So we'll go ahead and power the machine up. The power switch is in the back, and again, we're on 110, 115 volt uh, common shop power. <clears throat> as far as orientation of the machine is concerned, you can see on my top left, I have control modes of, of manual versus automatic. So manual means when I want this uh, machine to perform, I have to, have to pull the trigger of the torch. An automatic mode would mean when I get my tool close to the pit, to the panel, uh, I don't have to press the trigger. More in a, in a weld stick application would that be really helpful to have and then I want to look at kind of our function selections we try to make this machine pretty simple to understand uh, I have up and down arrows and I have my functions here with with some pictures next to it so my first mode is aluminum stud welding that's our first light that's lit up as I go down with the down arrow now I'm on steel tabs and you can see if you, if you notice the power adjustment did change we do set a recommended power adjustment for each of these applications out of the box uh, and we however we can manipulate that or change those that power adjustment on the fly I'll show you that in a minute so I go, ne my next mode is my weld my weld on slide hammer and then the next mode final mode down is more for steel studs so I'm going to hit that, hit that toggle that one more time and come back up to, to aluminum studs and you can see as this example the machines comes out of the box at 82 percent power adjustment however with an extension cord or maybe I'm further away from the wall or I'm working on a thicker piece of aluminum, I can't adjust that power adjustment on the fly. You can see I can go up, I can go down by turning to the left as well. So once I have that power adjustment where I want it, I can actually click in by pressing in and you can see the light blink, my power adjustment. That means that 86% is saved. So if I were to turn this machine off and turn this machine back on, 86% would be, would be my application for aluminum studs. You can see six to 65% for steel tabs. So I come back up to aluminum studs, but maybe someone in the shop has been playing with this or using a different application. I want to go back to a factory reset. You can see I have an up and down arrow side by side here. I can press those two simultaneously and come back up. And now I can reset that to 82%. And that's how this machine will come out of the box. So with all these features kind of shown, again, we have our torch connection and our ground connection, our control, uh, control arm as well. So we'll go ahead and turn this off. And we'll start talking about seating and getting this uh, torch ready to weld with aluminum. So 
I'm going to unwind my aluminum torch here. Bring it over. So on the aluminum side, uh, um, we only need our torch and our ground are one and the same tool. So one of the things you'll notice is these two, uh, our, our two ground rings are actually on the torch itself and then we have a collet that sits in the middle. So when we're setting this welder up for aluminum stud welding, it's very important that we have the collet seated correctly, the stud seated correctly in the collet, and that we also prep our panel really well for whatever repair we're about to do. So you can see here, this is optimal collet depth, and when, when you get this machine, you, you, may, you may not have anything in the collet, and so we'll go ahead and loosen that up with the wrench that is provided and take it out. So if your machine comes exactly like this and you say, I want to get this thing ready to weld, the machine does come with both a four and six millimeter collet to accommodate both a four and a six millimeter aluminum stud. You will also see in the back of the collet itself, there's a nut and then an, an adjustment, a micro adjustment. And this is how I can actually control the amount, of, the amount of depth or to set my depth for the aluminum stud when it's in the collet. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But once we have that exactly where we want it, we can tighten this nut up. That way every time we have repeatability and the aluminum stud will sit this exactly where we want it every time. So we're going to put that collet back in. And optimally, we want to seat it perfectly in line with our ground rings with no stud in the collet. So I'm going to, I have that exactly where I want it. I'm going to kind of come over and tighten that back down, make sure that's nice and tight. And my next step is I want to get aluminum stud ready. But before we do that, I want to make sure that everyone understands the aluminum studs that are available and the aluminum studs that come with this machine. So this machine features both four and six millimeter aluminum studs. You can see the difference here in the studs themselves, four millimeter uh, four millimeter studs work very well. Six millimeter studs may be more useful in a heavy duty application, heavy duty repair. We can also see I have, I have an 1140 and 1160 and I have a 1240 and a 1260. So my four or six that is, stands for my four millimeter or six millimeter. But my 11 or my 12 is gonna designate my two different types of aluminum that they're mixed with. So my 1160 and 1140 are my ALMG studs and my 1240 and 1260 are my ALSI studs. So based on the compounds that we're working with, with aluminum repair, uh, one manufacturer you know, may, may stick better than the other. So you know, ALMGs are what we find works with most vehicles that we've worked with. However, if we don't get a good stick or a good weld, we do include the ALSI studs as well. So it's really a trial and error, but if, 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 one, if the ALMG doesn't work, I would always start with these. And if these don't work, then you'll need to pivot over to the ALSI studs. Again, um, another thing that's included are some swivel pulling tabs. And these actually, it's hard to see right here, but these studs are threaded. And then my pulling rings are ready to go. They're ready just to swivel and screw right on. And, and then I would use this to perform a pull. We'll show that in a minute. But we do include a 10 pack of both four and six millimeter pulling rings as well. So when I'm back to my torch and my tool, you can see we have our, our torch set up and, and our collet seated where we're pretty, pretty much directly in line with the, the grounds themselves. I'll turn the power back on. Again, the switch is in the back. And we'll go ahead and get a six millimeter stud out. For, for this demonstration and video, we are showing these capabilities on six millimeter, but it works beautifully on four millimeter as well. So we wanna go ahead and seat that. And I use my finger. You can, you can use a diff couple different ways to do it, but what we're optimally looking for, and we have this seated properly the right way, is about two millimeters of stick out. We don't want this stud all the way against the collet because if we get a weld, we don't want that sticking to the collet. And if we have it too far out, then we're not getting the optimal pressure we're trying to look for in aluminum stud weld. Also, we're talking about pressure. This is a spring-loaded collet, so we can adjust the pressure on the back of the torch itself by going left or right to give more tension or less tension to our collet itself. So we have this stud exactly where we want it. And we're gonna go ahead, preparation with aluminum is, is key. I wanna make sure and really give this panel a good brush with a stainless steel brush. Another thing we wanna do is make sure to, to treat our stud. Our stud may be sitting in a box for six months. If we use our finger, there's oils from our hands that get on that stud. We don't want that contamination. Make sure that we prep the stud as well as the panel. 
So then we're going to come over to the, to, the, to the panel itself. We want to make sure that these ground rings, you know, we don't want to be off center. We want to make sure that they're firmly down on the panel. And then I like to put my other hand, and we have the trigger on, on our torch itself, and then I like to put my other hand on the other side of the, of the torch. And we're going to go ahead and hit fire. And then we're going to pull straight up. So one of the big things to think about, and we have a successful weld on a six millimeter aluminum stud. One of the important things to think about, especially when we're pulling these studs up, is that these, these studs have great pulling strength vertically up and down, but they don't have very good strength going left to right. So if we're trying to pull it off and trying to pull it off at an angle, we may have it break off. We don't, we don't, we don't want that. And any of our pulling applications with, with aluminum repair, we're gonna be pulling straight up from the panel itself. So again, we've got a nice stick, we've got a nice stud. I'll go ahead and put one more down, just so everyone can see. Again, if our power adjustment is not exact, if we're on an extension cord, we're far away from the wall, 25, 50 foot extension cord, we may have to change that power adjustment a little bit and increase that power. But 82% seems to work really nicely for what we're doing right now. Again, it doesn't matter if you just brushed it because it's just a good rule of thumb to make sure to get that stainless steel brush and brush every time before your stud. You may walk away, you may go to lunch, you come back, that's oxidized and it's not ready to work. So again, we're gonna prep our stud. We prepped our panel. We're gonna come right next to the other one or very close. And there we go, we've got a nice successful aluminum stud weld right next to this guy. I wanted to put these kind of close because it's nice to, to show that these swivel rings that are that are brand new from HNS Auto Shot that do come with your purchase uh, are the beauty of them being a swivel is you can get these studs really close to one another. I'm going to go ahead and thread these on, and then I'm going to use some some sort of a pulling rod. Um, you'll get a four pack with your purchase if you purchase the 9862. Uh, they're also available from us as well, a little four piece pulling rod kit. You'll want to put a pulling rod through these through these holes, and then we're going to get a bridge. This is our 12 inch quick pull bridge. And the thought process is we're going to get these in line, we're going to set up, and then we're going to start performing our pull. Again, it's also important to note when you're working with aluminum, um, a propane torch is required. You're going to need to heat and stress this panel out as you're working with it. So when you get your, your everything ready to go, you're going to want to start, and as you start pulling, you'll want to apply heat as, as you're pulling so to ensure you get the dent out. So again, this is the uh, Uni 9802 Dual Pro 2.0 multifunction steel and aluminum stud welding system from H&S Auto Shop.